Hey everybody, welcome to episode 37. We are back here on Victory Road. I did take a little time and train the team up to level 56. And I'll probably do a little more training still once we're all the way through Victory Road. Um, oh, also I did find... Oh, should use Drapel. Um, I'll do that in a second, but... Oh, well, Dino, that's actually good XP. Um, I did find another trainer who I think is a veteran, so we'll face her first. Uh, maybe she's guarding an item or something, not really sure. Also changed up her items just a little bit. Um, I gave Vasa a expert belt uh, because I realized I used my little calculator and realized that his move set, well, not right now, but if we had a wild charge, which I think we'll get somewhere in Victory Road or somewhere before the Pokemon League, um, which is an electric type move, then his coverage will be super effective against about 69.8% of Pokemon. And then after the Pokemon League, when I replace Head Smash with Earthquake, he'll be super effective against 77% of all Pokemon. There's a really cool calculator you can find online. Let's use that repel. Um, that'll tell you how many Pokemon a moveset is super effective against. I've also moved some of the gems to the top, since we'll probably use at least the Flying Gem. Um, I'm thinking probably against the Champion, because I only have two. So I might farm a few more, but I'm guessing they're probably a bit of a pain to farm, since... Yeah, there's, what, 17 gem types or 16 gen types? No, I guess 17 this generation. Um, yeah, I was going to train this patch of grass here, but I haven't faced this trainer yet, so I did not. So we'll face her together. Um, yes, yeah, so I kept our movesets pretty much the same for now until we make it through Victory Road, and then once we get through, I'll replace Boss's strength with either Wild Charge, or if we don't have that yet, um, maybe Rock Slide or something. Oh, this isn't good. Oh, yes, it is. Never mind. Sigalith is psychic and flying, so Surf is evenly effective. Unfortunately, it is faster, and we are now taking a nap. All right, let's try this again. Um, I really want to get the black glasses, but unfortunately, it's still winter in game. And even though it feels like the seasons change very frequently, oh, I think we're about to lose to the Sigilith. Uh, yeah, sleep is a very powerful status condition. Um, all right, let's bring in a dark type. Um, so I'd love to get the black glasses, but like I was saying, the seasons uh, only actually change once per real life month, I think. So I don't know how long we've been in winter, but it's gonna be a little bit before we get to spring. And you can only get the black glasses, I believe, in spring or summer. So that might have to wait until post Pokemon League or, yeah. Maybe we'll never actually get them, and I'll have to do the, uh, I'll have to do the uh, Dread Plate instead, which is the Dark Type Arceus Plate, which also powers up Dark Type attacks by 20%, the same as Black Glasses does. However, you can't get the Dread Plate until you have Dive, and you can't get Dive until after the Pokemon League. So uh, basically, I have no choice but to use either Twisted Spoon or I actually think I gave um, I gave Nim Charcoal because I realized that outside of Dark Pulse, which gets stab damage. Flamethrower is currently our next strongest move, so if there was ever a Pokemon that resists uh, Dark Pulse, Flamethrower would be the one I'd be more likely to use than Extra Sensory. Not bad, I like your strength. Well, thank you. Definitely put up a good fight. Let's see who's up next. I guess it really doesn't matter too much because they're all level 56. So we'll stick with Asper. And, oh, okay, maybe this is the way... Oh, okay. I thought I was being clever by going the watery route, but we just ended up at the same place. Luckily, there is a doctor over there. Very convenient. It's not enough for me just to be together with Pokemon. I want to win. Also, sorry if I sound a little weird today. I feel like I'm, I sound nasally, but I don't think I have a cold or COVID or anything, thankfully. I think it's just you know, winter allergies, I guess. Um, I also fell asleep on the couch last night, which for some reason always makes me a little more stuffy in the morning. All right, Whimsicott is a grass type, so we will use Return. And we are poisoned. I keep forgetting that I feel like in later gens, grass types are immune to the, to the powder moves. I could be totally wrong there, but that feels right. But clearly not in this generation. So we'll definitely have to see that doctor afterwards. Tailwind is a really cool move that I think doubles the speed of your team for three turns. 
so we'll have to be extra careful if he has any more Pokemon. Well, 59 though, he probably doesn't if it was 59. Oh, he does. Wow, these are very strong trainers. But I guess if they beat all six gyms and are here challenging the Pokemon League, they almost have to be. And Feather Dance, I think, slows us down, right? So that's kind of a, a useless move to use when you already have a Tailwind on your team. You probably should use like a Flying Attack to do some damage. In fact, I might even switch out if this return doesn't knock out on Pheasant. Because with the Poison, I don't really want um, Asper to take a Flying Tape Attack. But maybe we won't have to. How could you defeat me this utterly? It was a good fight. I appreciate it. All right, let's... I guess we have to fight the Doctor first. Let's bring out a Pokemon that's a little bit healthier. How about Alton? And he does have his new superpower move now. I did get enough blue shards for that. So yeah, I think otherwise... Um, right now, Russ, our uh, Archaeops, still has the... Um, Right. Normal, not fairy, so we can use Dragon Claw. Oh, actually, I could use Superpower. That would have done more damage, but oh well. It still would have decreased our attack and all, so maybe, maybe this was a good idea. Oh, Minimize. That's really annoying. I really don't like evasiveness moves. And yeah, they made it so that it raises it sharply now, which is just like the worst idea in the world. Like, it was already a super annoying move that everybody hated. Why would you make it twice as effective? Like... I feel like, at least in some scenarios, I think evasiveness boosting moves are banned in competitive play, because otherwise you would just have a Pokemon that uses like Minimize three times, and they'd be like, not impossible to hit, but you'd hit him like one in four times. And I don't know if like Roar, or I guess Haze would probably still hit. But yeah, it's, just, it's super annoying, because even after one, you hit them half as many times. So it's just such a good move. And it's, it's an annoying move too, because all just based on luck. Like at least Confusion you can switch out, but against Minimize, not much you can really do. Alright, good job, Alton. Power through. I guess since you only have one Pokemon, I probably should use Superpower. Would have saved us some trouble. But you live and learn. Alright, well thank you for healing me up. Um, in that case, we'll stick with Alton in the front for a little bit. And we'll head back into Victory Road. Part 3, I guess? A very interesting victory road. I like that there's some outside parts too. Hmm, I don't think there's a way to face both. Oh, maybe there is. Let's see if this works. Behold the blinding brilliance of my many gym badges. Yay, it worked. Something about you reminds me of that trainer from two years ago. Maybe because we're both being controlled by the same real life person? Same soul, perhaps? Webster and Shanta. Alright, that's cool. It is a double battle and not just two single battles. Okay, so Durant is a... Hmm. A fire type, I think? He looks kind of ground type. He's like a mole, but I think he's actually... Or I guess he's an anteater. Which is funny because... Uh, Durant... I'm oh, sorry. Heatmore, rather, is a fire type anteater. Durant is the steel ant. Um, okay, so... Thinking, thinking, thinking. Do we have anything good against fire? We have Dig, which is good against fire. Um, we have a few moves. Let's kind of double up on Heat Well. Yeah, let's double up into Heat more. Because I really want to get him down before he does damage to Asper. It's like his Durant seems like it'd be a bug type or. Wait, it is. Now I'm confused. Is it Bug and Steel, or is it just Steel? I, I feel like it's just Steel. I feel like I'm always confused by that, and I always think it's Bug and Steel, but then it does it kind of feels right, too, because Bug and Steel is a really good combination. It's only with the Fire. I'm going to say that Durant is Bug and Steel, and Heat more is Pure Fire. Not Fire. I know it's not Fire Ground. It's either Pure Fire or Pure Ground. I know one of these two always confuses me, and the fact that I don't remember which of these two confuses me only confuses me further. <laughs> I'm going to look it up on my phone while I'm doing this. And Galvantula, an electric and bug type. All right, so let's go with, um, let's go with, 
I'm worried about like a, a Bug Buzz, although Glavantula is pretty strong. So let's go with Super Power against Durant. For some nice super effective damage, and we'll try for a return against Glavantula. And Durant's faster too, I didn't see that last time. So that's unfortunate, but they are a couple levels higher. This could be a tough fight actually, because they have four Pokemon, we have six. But theirs are 59, ours are like 56, 57-ish. Luckily it's now like three to... Um, three to five, I think. All right, so that didn't do as much damage as I thought. Durant has a pretty good defense stat, I guess. Oh, because it is Bug and Steel, yep. All right, so let's bring in Nim. Do some fire damage against these two bug types. And of course, when I search Durant, it's it's kind of Durant. Thumbs up, Durant Pokemon, let's try that. Yeah, Bug and Steel, okay. All right, well, and now our attack is lowered. So let's do, uh, and Dig is resisted by Bug, right? Yeah, obviously, otherwise it'd be good against the Bug Steel. So it's also not, these are some pretty good type combinations. Let's just use Dragon Claw against Alphantula, and we'll use Flamethrower against Durant, who is four times weak to it, and that should finish it off. So I probably could have used like Dragon Claw on Galvantula instead of Super Power, kept our attack and defense higher, but I was still thinking that Durant was pure Steel type for some reason. It's probably because Heat More is pure Fire type, and not Fire and Ground like it seems to be. I will fact check that as well, so I'm not telling you guys lies. I don't think there is a basketball player named Heat More. And it is a pure fire type, yes. All right, so Fair Thorn, a, another kind of fitting Pokemon with their theme. Not really sure how, but a grass and steel type kind of reminds me of um, Fortress a little bit. Okay, so I think we should use one more Dragon Claw on Galvantula and one more Flamethrower on Fair Thorn, which is also double weak to fire. Um, grass and steel is a little less good of a type than Bug and Steel, at least in terms of defense it's weak to fighting as well as doubly weak to fire but since we've already decreased our attack once with superpower i'll just use dragon claw and we'll save the fire for fair thorn also interesting that a status effect does not break through the illusion that's good to know it's only up oh, unfortunately the status effect well it didn't break our illusion does stop us from attacking and yeah after that defense drop down goes Ultimate. So this has been a good battle. We might have to go to the uh, doctor again real quick. But let's bring up the real Basa. We'll have Nim and Basa on field together, which is pretty cool. And now this Ferrothorn should not stand a shadow of a chance. Or a seed of a chance, you should say. Alright. Down it goes. Okay, that was a tough battle. A fun one, though. I really like tough double battles. Your skill is too brilliant to behold. It's so bright that I can't see anything. Yes, that mix of kindness and power is just like a trainer. See, that was almost like a, like a gym battle. Like, that would have been a really cool double gym battle. Fortunately, the doctor is right here. So we will heal up. And then let's bring Rust to the front of the party. I feel like we haven't used him in a little bit. Thank you, future best doctor in Unova. And I can't promise anything, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be a rival fight at the end of this. Something to look forward to, because uh, usually at the end of Victory Road there's a rival fight, and we haven't faced Hugh in a while. Hmm. Those steps give me like end of Victory Road vibes, so let's check out down here first. And there are, I think, some TMs I want in here, right? There's, um... oh, maybe not. I just felt a great wind. Are you the one who kicked it up? Whoever felt it, dealt it. Um, and there's also the Dragon Claw, which I have the Draco Plate, which is like the same thing. Not the Dragon Claw, the Dragon Scale. <laughs> dragon Claw, Dragon Scale, Dragon Fang, so many dragon things. Um, dragon Claw is the attack, Dragon Scale and Dragon Fang are the held items. And the Dragon Fang is the one I want. Uh, Alright, let's use Dig, which should be super effective against a ground type, or against a rock type rather, being a ground attack. Sandstorm won't affect us since we are part rock type as well, so we are immune to the sandstorm, just like steel and ground types are. And Pokemon with uh, Sand Veil. There are a few that have Sand Veil that are not ground types. I can't think of any. 
but I know there are some. Um, all right, one more dig should do the trick. Even though it's super effective, it doesn't get stab, and Gigalith has a very high defense stat. Um, yes, yeah, so I think I read that the Dragon Claw, no, the Dragon Fang is the held item is also here in Victory Road somewhere, which would be cool because it's just a little more like thematic, I guess, than just having a Draco plate. I prefer to use like the actual items to the plates, even though they have the exact same effect. Oh, this is okay. I was about to say Skarmory's one of those Pokemon that has a ton of resistances, so um, I was really worried that all of our moves would be not very effective. But because it's part flying, Rock Slide is even the effective. Now Skarmory does have a very high defense stat, so we'll see how much this does. Not quite half. We got the flinch, so I'll take that. Yeah, I really don't like the, the move Sandstorm. Unless you're like playing a pet of battling with a Sandstorm team. And even then, just go with like a Pokemon with Sandstream as the ability. Using the move for just five turns of like 1 16th damage, you know. Maybe if you have Sand Veil, it could, it could pay off, but I don't know. Let's use U-Turn, because that is a... In fact, that is our only one-turn fully accurate attack. So we'll just use that, and then if he has another Pokemon, we'll bring in somebody else. I think it said he had two, though. Yep. Better in Abraham. This defeat will also blow me away. And we're 67. So let's bring out Basa. Always like using Basa. Not the fastest, but very tough. And a very good move pool. Which hopefully will get better soon. Oh no, the bridge is broken. Alright, what's over here? A hey, Max Repel. Any hidden items? Doesn't look like it. One, you are a Pokemon trainer. Two, I am an ace trainer. Put them together and it's obvious that we are going to battle. Very obvious indeed. Well deduced, my friend. Two Pokemon. Looks like all these trainers are two Pokemon, which is okay. I, I kind of would prefer some more variety, I guess, but it's definitely a lot more fun to face a trainer with more than one Pokemon than it is one with just one Pokemon, so... <coughs> Excuse me. I appreciate that. All right, sorry about that. Quick coughing spell. Uh, Swana is water and flying. So let's see if we can get off a head smash. Ooh, Brave Bird. Yeah, we are weak to both water and flying, so this is gonna be bad. I just called Vasa tough. Let's see how tough she is. Uh, okay, pretty tough, but not tough enough to survive a Brave Bird, which is a 120 base power move with stab from a higher level Swana. So, oh well, we tried. Um, all right, I bring out Flo, but Flo really can't do a lot to a Swana either. Uh, Swana is really weak to electric and rock. And I think that's it, just like Gyarados, right? Is there any other type it would be weak to? No, I guess not. Um, yeah, our team is a little bit Swana weak now that I look at it. Especially if it had like Ice Beam or something. I'm not sure if Swana can learn Ice Beam. I haven't actually trained one yet, but... Um, that could be really good against our team. So we'll bring out Ulton, which hopefully has a neutral matchup. Let's see how he does. I guess it would basically be Nim would be kind of an even matchup. And Flo. But unfortunately, Flo would. If we had Sludge Bomb, it'd be better. I could at least use that. Alright, let's use Dig for some super effective damage against Ampharos. Very cool Gen 2 Pokemon. Electric type. Yeah, hopefully we don't face any Gyarados in the Pokemon League, because that could be very tough. Oh, its defense rose drastically. That's not good. Picked a good turn to use it. That's always the risk of using two-turn attacks, is that they'll do something like that on their off turn. Alright, so this Ampharos has a very good defense stat, although I don't think it can learn any recovery moves besides um, Rest, which it probably doesn't have. So we'll leave Ulton in for now, but if we have to, we'll bring out a special attacker. Oh no, Static! Yeah, I love how tough these battles are. This is actually fun. Like, I, I'm enjoying this. Um, even though it's definitely uh, not easy on our Pokémon. I, I do enjoy a good challenge. We're definitely not going to use Dig now, because with the par Paralysis, you have to get the roll... You have to be lucky with the roll two moves in a row, which is not as likely. So... We're going to kind of keep chipping away here with Dragonclaw. 
Because the good news is we also resist Ampharos's electric attacks, being a dragon type. So we're both just kind of chipping away at each other. I think it'll really come down to do we get fully paralyzed or not. And we did not, so good job, Bolton. Yeah, because while Swana is very powerful, Gyarados is even stronger still. It has the same typing, so... Uh, well, I guess Fossa will have an electric attack, but Fossa is also weak to both water and flying. Not that Gyarados has flying moves, but water would be enough. Um, all right, let's head down here, and I might need to use some items soon. Because we're not really near the doctor, and yeah, let's just go ahead and use some items, because, you know, that's why I bought them, right? We have tons of money. No reason to save it. This is not real life. So let's go ahead and heal up. Wouldn't it be great, though, if you could earn, like, thousands of dollars by just defeating trainers in Pokemon battles? Oh, this is like a full heal. I forgot about these. They've been right there the whole time. You guys have probably been like, don't use the full heal, use the Castellia. No, it's right there. But better late than never. All right, we are all healed up. I'd love if I finished saying that right now Russ has Fly and the Sharp Beak still. I think I did, but I will trade that out for Acrobatics and a Flying Gem before the Pokemon League. Um, or no item for the Elite Four, and then we'll use a Flying Gem for the Champion. Oh, well, this seems pointless. Oh, or not. Where am I? Where's the town map? Is this like a, a wood? Like, is this part of Victory Road still? It's still part of Victory Road. Interesting. These forking paths, yeah, they're not wrong about that. Ooh, hopefully I don't need cut to get to any of the items I want. Maybe it's just a shortcut. No pun intended. This is cool, though. I like that this Victory Road is not just like a, a mountain cave. I like that it's got some outside areas, uh, even a woods in it. That's unique, I think. At least in the ones I've been to. Chandra. Wasn't there a Chandra? I think it was like a, with an S. Or Shant Shanta, maybe? Maybe Shanta and Chandra. Oh, this is cool. Two very strong, kind of similar similar vibe fire types. Um, we're fire and fighting, although Darmanitan also can learn superpower, so it's it's not fighting type, but, but we have Head Smash. I think Darmanitan can learn Head Smash as well. So, and I think they both have the hidden ability, or can have the ability. Oh no, it missed! Oh, that sucks. Um, I'm probably going to switch now, because I don't want Bossa just to die for nothing. So let's bring in Russ to resist the Thrash, which I think he's locked into now. Um, I think they can both have the ability Rockhead? Is that what it's called? I think it's Rockhead. That's what I was trying to think of earlier, where you don't take recoil damage. There we go. And now we should be faster, although Darmanton's very fast too. Like I said, I trained one in, um, in my previous series, in my Pokemon Black boss battles, and it was a lot of fun and very strong. Very fast, very high attack stat, and great move pool, so just a really powerful Pokemon. I'm kind of surprised they don't give a Darmanitan to, like, um, like the champion. Like, in the previous game, the champion was... Oh, Tangrowth. Tangrowth is cool, too. Oh, doing a little dance there. Um, the champion was Alder, who I think we face in the post-game in this one. And it seems like a Darmanitan would have been a perfect Pokemon for him, instead of, like, he has, like, three bug types. Like, I feel like taking away either Excelgore or Ex Excavalier, Excavalier, however you say it. Um, maybe Esc Excavalier, whatever, because it's not that strong. Um, another Steel Bug type, by the way. Maybe replacing that with... Um, with Darmantan would have been good. Who is the first Pokemon he sends out? Because I know he has Volcarona... He has... Ah! Uh, wait. Okay, so we can't go to that south area unless maybe we go through here? Where are we? Oh, we're at the cave again! Oh, cool. Alright. Good thing I kept strength. Something was telling me that was wise. Before I forget, let's just use another, another potion here. And why not? Just in case we face like some really tough trainer or our rival, actually, we probably should stay healed because I don't know where our rival. Uh, oh, interesting. A little bit of a puzzle here, I think. There we go. Clever devs. Okay, 
one more south looks like. And then we can cross this. It probably just goes back to where we were, but maybe there's like an item in between here and there. This does seem... Oh. This does seem like a good place to hide either the, the Dragon Fang or the uh, Wild Charge TM, which is what we're looking for. Another trainer. Well, that's good. It means we haven't been here yet. You, who's brought you this far? And I like the size of this, too. Like, there's not just, like, three or four trainers. I think the Gen 2 had, like, the worst victory road because there were a lot of cool trainers, no pun intended. There were many of them cool trainers on the way there. But then when you got there, it was, like, empty except for your rival. It might be, maybe that was Gen 3, one of the earlier gens. Just had a, a very boring victory road, just like wild Pokemon. So it's like you could just pop a repel and then just get right to your rival. I also really love this, too, because it's Pokemon, like strong Pokemon from all the preceding generations, which is just so much fun. Okay, so Drift Blim. Um, you know, just because Head Smash missed last time and because we're going to... I mean, it's, it's super effective. I think it's smart in many ways to use it. And because we're going to replace it with Earthquake eventually. Might as well use it while we can. That's going to do a lot of damage. A 150 base power. Oh, I just thought of something. Drift Blim has a lot of HP. And if we're taking half of the damage we did in recoil damage... Okay, we survived. Okay, I was, I was honestly worried that between that and the Aftermath, we might actually go down. But... Good job, Basa. There's that sturdiness I was talking about. Okay. Um, we have nothing super effective against Claydol, who is a ground and psychic type. So let's just use Flamethrower, do some damage, maybe get a burn. If we're lucky. Yay, we are lucky. I don't like leaving in a Pokemon to faint, but then again, like these are very tough fights too. So I don't want to like switch into something and take super effective damage accidentally, and then yeah, you never know what would happen. Um, with, I guess, Asper probably being the exception, because if Asper faints, it loses friendliness. And return is based on friendliness, so... That probably sounds bad. Like, I'm only rebutting Pokemon if they if I can get some use out of there, how much they like me. But um, I do generally try not to let them overly faint when I can help it. It's your reliable Pokemon who brought you this far, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. Well, I will at least be kind and use a Revive, which I think also does increase friendliness. I feel like using items on them. I don't know if potions count, but... I think using items does slightly increase their happiness, too. Poor Basa, though. Can't get a break. Can't quite get to level 57. But that's okay, because that means I can just use him some more. Use her some more. And that looks like it might be like a Psychic Trainer or something. So let's bring out Flo. Just because Basa's part fighting type. You are no ordinary opponent. That is what my ghost type Pokemon is whispering to me. Yeah, so I guess we would have been okay, because even though uh, Super Power is useless against ghost types, we still have Flamethrower, and Ghost isn't super effective against fighting. Oh, but see, he says ghost types, or she says ghost types. They say ghost types. Um, but Matang is a psychic type, so... We were smart to switch, and Earth Power will be super effective. Definitely glad that we have Earth Power. I had to remind myself which dragon item was which, which is bad, because dragon is, like, my type. I don't have dragon types. Um, but uh, dragon fang is the one that powers up moves. Dragon scale is the one that evolves Cedra into Kingdra. And I'm always confused because... Okay, there's a ghost type. Because in the original Gen 2 games, where they introduced both those items, um, the dragon scale... The one meant for the one that evolved Cedra into Kingdra also powered up Dragon type attacks. Back then it was by 10%, not by 20%, but same effect. Um, and I always thought that they both had the same effect. So it's just like Dragon Scale was like a Dragon Fang that also evolved Cedra into Kingdra. Um, but I read today, and I don't know if I knew this before or not, I probably did at some point, that actually there was a bug, and I guess when they had meant to assign the effect to Dragon Fang, they assigned it to Dragon Scale. So Dragon Fang did nothing in Gen 2. Um, I feel like this is the way we came in, so what was the point of being here? Maybe this is like, oh, there's all these forking paths and they all kind of just feed here back to where we were? Because there was no other way to go, right? So I'm not sure what the point was of pushing that boulder and everything. I guess that we can go backwards, maybe? 
how do I get over here? It must be a different path. All right, I'm pretty sure that's the way we came in, though. Just where we are in the cave, it, I'm, yeah, I'm like 95% sure. So let's go back this way instead. And I think what I might actually do here, because I don't know how much more victory road there is, and it could be a decent amount, plus we have the rival fight. I'm going to go ahead and break the episode here. And uh, we come back, we will continue going through Victory Road. I'm sure we'll have some more exciting battles, culminating with the fight against Hugh, our rival. So, as always, thank you guys very much for watching. Keep being awesome, and I'll see you again soon.